Good evening. On behalf of the Westbrook Council of Beaches, welcome to this candidate's forum. I am Andy Schatz, and I have been asked to serve as your moderator for the evening. Uh, before I introduce the candidates, I would just like to mention that we have in our audience tonight, in addition to the legislative candidates running this year, uh, Terry Lung and Anselmo Delia, who are running for judge of probate. to ask them questions after we break and they'll, they'll stay around for a while so you can uh, meet with them. Uh, I also wanted to recognize here tonight Noel Bishop, the first selectman of Westbrook. Uh, we're delighted to have with this this evening all of the candidates we're running for the 33rd Senate District and the 23rd and 35th State Assembly Districts, portions of which are uh, represented in Westbrook. Uh, the election will be November 4th, and uh, I'll say this a couple times, I hope that everyone will go out and vote, and if for any reason you won't be able to vote on November 4th, please take steps to get an absentee ballot ahead of time. Uh, the only ground rules, really, for tonight is we want to give the candidates as much time as possible to answer. After we go through a series of five questions that they have been provided ahead of time, which were drafted by the Westbrook Council of Beaches, uh, you will all be given an opportunity to ask questions. I ask that when you ask your questions, please make them brief so we maximize the time for the candidates to answer. Uh, we will cut you off if the question runs more than 30 seconds. Um, so if, if, you know, try not to use too much of a preface. In addition, uh, everyone wants to applause different things at different times. That tends to, to delay things and, and prevent the candidates from giving as much of responses as they can during the short period of time that we have. So I ask that you withhold all your applause. Uh, there will be two exceptions for that, and one of them is right now, after I introduce all the candidates to you. Uh, starting on... Uh, your left, uh, we have uh, uh, Devin Carney. Uh, let me say this once again. Please do not applaud until after I've introduced all of the candidates. There was one set of applause rather than seven. Uh, De Devin Carney and Mary Stone were running for the 23rd State Assembly District. Uh, Mary will be speaking first at the opening and closing, and Devin second. In the center, we have three candidates, uh, Colin Bennett, uh, Art uh, Emily Bjornberg, and Art Linares. Uh, Colin will be speaking first at the opening and closing, Art will be speaking second at the opening and closing, and Emily third at the opening and closing. Uh, and during the course of the, the forum, as the questions come out, we'll, we will change the order with each question. And finally, to your far right, uh, or second to your far right, we have Jesse McLaughlin, and then at the end, Tom Vecino, uh, running in the 35th State Assembly District. And uh, uh, Mr. McLaughlin will speak first, and Mr. Vecino second, and then will be closing. These positions were determined by drawing before the meeting began. Uh, and we have a timekeeper tonight. Uh, who will be letting me know when there's 10 seconds left in the question. Hopefully you'll see his bright red flag. Uh, and so uh, please start ending your question. We basically are going to give each of the candidates one minute uh, for openings, one minute for closings, one minute for answers to questions, one minute for rebuttal. Uh, and when we get to the, the audience, they will have that period of time to answer your questions as well. Uh, so. Uh, I'd like to, to begin, um, as I said, there were five questions that were previously circulated to the candidates uh, by the Westbrook Council of Beaches, along with uh, a set of facts that had been assembled by one of our members, uh, which we gave the candidates ahead of time in case they wanted to look at it in, in connection with uh, their answers. Okay. Uh, good point. So it's a request that you all stand up when you 
speak so that they can see you as well as hear you. Is that okay for the camera folks? Does, does that work? I, I'm sure I'm sure that they will be able to adjust to that. Just uh, and uh, lastly, before we begin, I do want to give a special thanks to uh, Valley Shore Community Television and Chris Morgan, its public access coordinator, for taking the air in this forum. And now, if we could give a, a warm welcome to the candidates. The first question tonight, for more than a year, Westbrook volunteers collected water samples from Long Island Sound and brought them to a state lab in an attempt to obtain state approval for recreational shellfishing. Approval requires sampling for several years. To the great disappointment of many Westbrook residents, this effort was halted because due to budget cuts, the state decided it could no longer support the analysis of water samples from towns that were just developing their programs. And regulations required that to have a program, the samples must be analyzed by the state. What, if anything, would you do as a legislator to help Westbrook and other towns develop shellfishing programs? And we'll start with Debbie. Into the opening. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. Uh, right, we started off with, with open table. So, uh, Debbie, why don't you start? Or actually, I'm sorry. Mary, you're going to say. Hello, everyone. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, my thanks to the West. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Hello, everyone. Thank you all for coming out tonight. My thanks to the Westbrook Council of Beaches for organizing this debate and to you, Devin, for accepting the invitation. In 21 years of community service, I've gained invaluable experience and knowledge. Two terms on the Board of Education, two on the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Open Space Commission, President of the Friends of the Library, and, and on and on. I've learned how to get things done by working with people through our differences and across party lines. As a leader on these boards, I was able to learn our issues and our strengths. The Lower Connecticut River Valley is a beautiful environment that we must work hard to protect, but it's people who make this community so great. I look forward to learning from and working with each of you when you send me to Hartford. Thank you. I want to thank the Westbrook Council of Beaches for holding the debate, and uh, I would also like to thank my opponent for, for coming. Um, I also want to say a special thank you to Marilyn Giuliano, who's the retiring state representative after 12 years. I know, uh, Mary and I, whoever wins, has very big shoes to fill, so I think she's done a great job. But my name is uh, Devin Carney, and I've lived in the district since I was three years old. I'm a proud alumnus of Old Saber High Schools, and went on to become the first person uh, in my media family to receive my bachelor's. Since then, I've had a diverse career in politics, business, um, while at times working part-time jobs to help pay the bills. I understand firsthand what many folks here in the district go through to keep up with the bills, a rarity in Hartford. I live in Old Saybrook, but my family has deep roots here in Westbrook. As many of you know, uh, my grandfather was Art Carney, the actor. Um, he, he loved the community here, and it's a big reason why he and my grandmother decided to settle here. Uh, but I promise to be an independent voice for the people of the district and will not allow special interests or party leaders to dictate how I vote. I hope after tonight I will have proven why I deserve your vote on November 4th. Okay, next we have the three candidates for the 33rd Senate District, starting with Colin Bennett. Hello, everyone. Good evening, everybody. And thank you so much for being here, standing room only. How about that? Go Westbrook. Um, I'm from Westbrook, at least I moved here in high school. I graduated from here. I kind of love it here. Um, I did for a long time, but I think things are not going in the right direction, and we can talk about that a little bit. But before we do, I want to tell you a joke, or I want to ask a question that is a joke. Um, 
What's the difference, or what's a big difference between an actor and a politician? Actors have better script writers, better storylines. In any case, the point is, like, as you can see, I don't have a script up here because I'm speaking from the heart. Anything that you ask me, any questions that I have, it's how I'm going to feel honestly. And I promise you, one thing that I'm not going to do is pander to you, and you're going to find that out tonight, I can guarantee it. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mark Linares, and I'm the state senator for the Third District. I'd like to thank the Westbrook Council of Beaches for hosting this event and for all of you for being here today. I grew up in Westbrook. I went to Westbrook Public Schools, and I live at 1110 Old Clinton Road, about a quarter mile down the road from here. It's been an honor to serve all of you in the state senate over the past two years. I grew up with the same small town values that all of you have that we support our local family-owned small businesses, that we work hard to live within our means and balance our budget, and that we support local control for our teachers, our parents, and our students over their education policy. It's been an honor to work for you for the past few years, and I will continue to work tirelessly for the town of Westbrook and for the people of our community. Thank you. Thank you all for coming tonight. I really appreciate you taking the time to be here. My name is Emily Bjornberg, and as many of you know, I come from a family that has run the same small business in the same location inside the town of Lyme for the last seven generations. But today, my husband and I actually live in Hadline with our two small children who attend the same public schools that I did. In fact, my uh, son this year has the same third grade teacher that I did. Uh, Jason is an Iraq War veteran, and while he served in uniform overseas, I took my first job running an AIDS clinic in downtown Johannesburg. And that really started my career in terms of working uh, inside communities of faith on very tough issues of social justice. Like many of you, Jason and I are heavily invested in our community. We volunteer with the local land trust and the PTO, with area soup kitchens and food pantries, on town boards and committees. And uh, actually, my family comes from both political parties. In fact, my father still sits today on the Republican Town Committee inside the town of Lund. We have long been a family that puts everything we have into our community. So I ask for your support on November 4th, because I believe that our small towns deserve strong advocates on their behalf inside the state legislature. And last, we have the candidates from the 35th State Assembly District, uh, Jesse Blackman. Thank you, Westbrook Council of Beaches, and thank all of you for coming out and engaging in this public debate. My name is Jesse, and I'm running to the state representative for the towns of Westbrook, Clinton, and Killingworth. I went to the Westbrook school systems, went to college, came back, and went to work for my family's small business, We Move Libraries. I'm running because of my lineage here. My grandfather participated in building the spaces at the Neil Armstrong Room. He did that right here in Connecticut with less than a high school diploma. I'm running because I want the children that I work with on Sundays to have the same opportunity to be able to have a, a, a great education, to settle down here, find work here, uh, and choose to retire here. Uh, I, tonight, I ask for your consideration uh, to allow me to, to have the supreme honor of being your voice and your representation in Hartford. Thank you. And my last in town, Casino. Good evening. Thank you to the Westbrook Council of Beaches and all of their members and all of the citizens throughout Connecticut that are here tonight. I am State Representative Tom Casino. I represent you for the last couple of years for the 35th District in Hartford, working hard on a lot of problems. This is a good time to be a politician. I'm a small businessman for 30 years. I have a business in Westbrook with 10 employees. I know all of the problems that businesses are ha having. And I'm glad to be representing you up in Hartford with all kinds of different problems that we need to fix. This problem just didn't happen in the last few years. This problem has been going on for the last 25 years. So this is a good time to represent my fellow constituents up on the hill. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, okay, so to the first question, I'll dispense with reading a portion of the, the preface, but. Um, the state decided due to budget cuts 
that it could no longer support the analysis of water samples from towns that were just developing their shell fishing programs. And regulations required that to have a program, the samples must be analyzed by the state. What, if anything, would you do as a legislator to help Westbrook and other towns develop shell fishing programs? And we're starting with that. I'm to the 35th Assembly District, Tom Casino. Thank you. Uh, I'm a member of the Environmental Committee in Hartford. We spent a lot of time studying this issue with the Department of Agriculture. One thing I would do to keep the cost down for the taxpayers is get together with one of our colleges in the area, such as UConn Avery Point, that has a great marine biology program, and see if we could get them involved in doing some of this preliminary testing to keep the cost down to get this program going. And I'm sure that if we work with the Department of Agriculture and DEEP, we can come up with a solution being that recreational fishing is a very, very big uh, sport in our area, and this is part of our maritime industry in the area. I talked to the Department of Agriculture this morning to get some information, and they told me that they just purchased a unit to test for Vibrio in our area, so that's a step in the right direction. I also worked on banning a law using methoprene that kills our lobsters. Thank you. Okay. And Jesse Fox. The shell fishing industry generates $30 million a year here in Connecticut. Employs 300 people. This is an industry uh, that I believe we need to be fostering here in Westbrook. Municipalities are hurting for funding uh, and, and for, for revenue. So I will happily uh, be a liaison between municipalities and the DEP to, to work together to come up with the funding that we need to get these water, uh, the waters tested uh, and, and allow our people to, to enjoy this uh, very important uh, recreation, I believe. Great source of revenue if responsible. Thank you. Now, we're going to go through again the same order for rebuttal. I do want to mention don't feel like you have to use your minute for rebuttal. Any time that we say it here will mean that there will be more time for questions later on by the audience. Back to the General Assembly, Tom Casino. Thank you. Um, I have been working on this. I've worked with uh, local fishermen. In the area, as I mentioned before, I co-sponsored a bill to uh, ban methoprene. That's the chemical that's killing all of our lobsters, and that's a step in the right direction. Also, I co-sponsored the Clean Marina bill. Also, I, uh, at one point, I got together all of the marinas in our area, and we had a summit to talk about our dredging issue, what we do with our debris from dredging, which is a very big problem. I also co-sponsored a bill in the past session to lower the size of the oyster, which was a big controversy. I've also been involved with the leasing of the beds throughout the state. So I've been working on this problem, and this is a really serious issue as far as the pollution goes. Thank you. Thank you, Justin Lyon. Sure, so I'll just add, I'm a Republican, and I still think that we only get one Earth. Deserves care. Um, so what I'll add is the program of the College Oyster Sea Preparation Program uh, has been unfunded for five years now. And that's a direct result of these economic times. So I would argue that there is a, a correlation between how we're doing economically and the, the funding, the ability that we have to interact with our environment, to clean it, uh, and, and to enjoy it responsibly. Thank you. The second question from the Council of Beaches is as follows. We hear a lot about senior citizens on fixed incomes forced out by high property taxes, and residents' children forced to leave because they cannot find jobs along the shoreline to meet the high cost of living. Is this different from other areas in Connecticut, and what can or should be done to address these problems? Okay, on to the 35th Assembly District. First would be Jesse McLaughlin. Since really nuts. <laughs> We're experiencing brain drain. All of my friends are leaving. I've got about three or four left, and they're sitting in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I know what it's like to come back from college, start working, and, and not have not have buddies to, to share my life with. Um, you know, we we're also seeing our, our, our seniors take off as well. 
go for a drive, and you'll see the for sale signs. So I'm going to try to rifle off in this quick as late can some ideas that I have to make it easier to retain uh, our wonderful people. For seniors, like Art said, we need to reduce the tax on Social Security. We should be capping the property tax assessment at 3% a year to make it easier uh, for seniors to adjust when they're on a fixed income. And also what I learned by going door to door is that we're only, we're one of only a few states, oh boy, <laughs> one of only a few states uh, that doesn't allow USAA insurance holders to pass on their insurance to, to their family. I want to retain our veterans. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, this is a big issue, that, that, and I'll say it again, this is a good time to be a politician, to work on these issues. They've been around for years. I'm on a committee called the Moore Committee. We're dealing with all kinds of issues with property tax. About 75 cents out of every dollar goes to property tax. And we're looking into ways such as regionalization of services. This is a group that I've been involved with looking from the way we run our schools, our government, our transportation, and look at ways to regionalize, to bring the cost down. Another, uh, another issue that I worked on this year up in the house is the rate that we were getting gouged out, the supplier fee. You get a rate from these uh, rogue power companies that after six months raise your supplier fee. I worked on that to make it easier to walk away from it. We're putting in gas lines. The more gas lines we put in, causes competition throughout the market, which will bring our, all of our energy costs down to keep our costs down for our seniors. Thank you. So I talked to a lot of people in the neighborhoods, and they asked me where I'm from, and I said, I'm from Westbrook. They go, Westbrook? You guys have a nice mill rate. We're, it's like 26 where we live. I, I know, we're, we're 20. It's, it's pretty good. We like it. One of the reasons why we have a low mill rate is because we have businesses to help saddle the burden of, 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 the, of, of our town costs. So I'll give, you, I'll give you two commitments as a state representative and as your next state representative. I will work as a liaison between municipalities and businesses. Our, our, our employers feel ignored. Unilever and Clinton is a perfect example of a business that felt ignored and went to New Jersey. No offense, <laughs> Louie, but I would like our businesses to stay here in, in this state. And number two, I will work to prevent unfunded mandates that, that come down from Hartford uh, that combined with an exodus of employers are only going to make living here and having young people to see around and, and retaining our seniors that much more difficult. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not going to stand up here and blame anybody. I've been up in Hartford working hard on this and when I go back I'll be working hard on it again. I co-sponsored the Aerospace Investment Act to keep and retain 75,000 advanced aerospace jobs in our state. We have a great company in Westbrook, the lead company that the state has just invested in for 200 more employees. These are the kind of jobs that we're turning our young people into. The average age of the worker now is 55 years old. As the worker leaves the workforce, our new students that get out of school the world is theirs. There's a lot of engineering jobs. We're number one in research and development. We're number one in productivity. We have a lot of smart people here. A lot of mathematic jobs, technical jobs. In the future, Connecticut is gonna go right back up to number one. Thank you. The, the third question from the Council of Beaches is, is as follows. The perception in Hartford seems to be that shoreline towns compared to the rest of Connecticut are wealthier, more homogeneous, and have less need of social services. To what extent is that accurate or not? And what, if anything, would you do as a legislator about both this perception and the need for social services? Uh, we'll start this time with the 35th Assembly District and start with Congress now. Thank you. Uh, when I went up to the Capitol, I was uh, one of the first caucuses that I was involved with was the Intellectual Caucus for Disabled People. I worked with families from VISTA and VISTA themselves to look at some of the issues with funding to people with autism that are over 21. Basically, you're on your own after you turn 21. If your parent or relative doesn't want to take care of you, you're out of luck. So this was a big issue that I'm close to. We worked hard, we refunded the uh, count an additional $5 million this year. I 
And that's what I went up to Harvard for, and that's why I'm a politician to do things like that. Thank you. Thank you. And next, Justin McLaughlin. I think that the, the statement is rather inaccurate. We are, like the rest of this country, becoming uh, increasingly a, a, a two-class society. Uh, the middle class is uh, ever increasingly being pushed into the working poor. As your state representative, my desire is to make sure that the national trends do not occur in the state, that we retain a robust uh, middle class. All you have to do is, is stop in the local soup kitchens and check in with uh, the local social services to realize we are still suffering from protracted recession. There is, there is great need. Um, as your state representative, I will work with Hartford to make sure that dollars are spent responsibly, not where they're not needed, but where they are needed. They are needed in our districts for those who uh, having, are having a hard time with meals or are having a hard time uh, with, with heat uh, in, in their homes in, in the winter time. Uh, so I, I, I do believe uh, that with the, with the right steps, uh, we can reverse some of these trends. And on rebuttal now, again, we'll start with, with Tom Casino. Thank you. My district is no different than any district in the state. We have the same problems that everyone else has. Just last week, I got a call from a homeless vet that was living in the woods, hadn't eaten in a couple of days, and that's the kind of calls that I get. And these are the same concerns that they have in the big cities. One of the first grants that I brought back was a grant for our local farms for the community. And we have several farms for the community growing food for the poor, for our food pantries. And there's hundreds of volunteers, a lot in this room that I see right now, that are helping with that. Tomorrow, I'm going on a five-tour five tour tour of a, our community farms in the area with the Department of Agriculture to see what we can do to bring down help to our, our farms that grow food for the poor. Thank you. Just, just about that. I'm glad you brought up farms. I was just at the Spencer Dome Farm in, in, in Westbrook. I actually talked to the Domes, and uh, uh, they have delicious kale. <laughs> if you want a healthy snack, that's a place to stop. I'll, I'll share two quick stories. Uh, number one, uh, like Emily, I, I'm also immersed in, uh, uh, in, in my church and in, in the, the social work that it does. Uh, we have a program that offers like new clothes uh, to families. And, and you'd be surprised uh, of, of the kind of the calls that, that the church gets from families, houses you never even know. Uh, but, but people are hurting. These are hard times. Second story briefly. My father uh, started a business 23 years ago that I'm proudly a part of. And he put the, uh, his cell phone number in the New Haven Register uh, because we were hiring some, some, some temp workers. And I got 500 phone calls that week. <laughs> People are looking for work. They want to work. I, I, I would stand against uh, any claim that says people who are getting help are lazy. They want to work. They want a job. And I want to make it easier for businesses to hire people. Thank you. The fourth question from the Council of Beaches is as follows. How do we manage our coastline, taking into account both the needs of the environment, such as rising sea levels, sewage and septic systems, and beach erosion, and the needs of its inhabitants and property owners? On to the 35th Assembly District, we'll start with Jesse McLaughlin. There certainly is a tension uh, between the regulatory agencies and homeowners. I personally, I would look to successful states like Rhode Island and Massachusetts who have come up with effective denitrification programs. That is public enemy number one, I believe, in this discussion, is, is figuring out ways um, through, through small uh, and, and advanced homeowner technology uh, to clean the nitrogen from the water, prevent spillovers. So, uh, in my opinion, you kill two birds with one stone. Not only are you, are you improving, our beautiful environment, our beautiful beaches, but you also, through wastewater solutions, uh, you create a very necessary um, infrastructure to attract biotechnology companies, to attract companies that, that go through uh, lots of water and they need stable wastewater solutions. Thank you. Thank you. Coastline management is one of my biggest issues. I am a member of the Shoreline Preservation Committee in Harvard. And we've been looking at some of the storms that we've had in a couple of years, the last few years. And we get a catastrophic storm every two years. Before that, it was every 15 years. 
in the last couple of storms, I-95 was closed, our rail was closed, our shoreline was built on an 8 to 10 foot storm surge, now it's up to an 11 to 12 foot storm surge. We're lifting our homes, there's money available to homeowners and businesses at low interest rates to fix and maintain, lift or move back their homes before the storm and not after. That saves taxpayers a lot of money and it's our issue. I've also been involved with co-sponsoring the bill that's been floating around the shoreline on shutters, trying to reform the shutter issue with the insurance company to save our homeowners money. Thank you. So again, we'll go back to another rebuttal if anyone has any. Uh, Justin Newblock. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Justin Newblock. I had the opportunity uh, to spend four months studying in, in, in southeastern China, uh, and you can't go in the water there. Okay, so I think we can all agree that we don't want what's going on in the Southeast uh, uh, Asian waters to, to occur here in, in our beach. I think we can all agree we want to go into the water uh, and, and not have to worry about um, sores afterwards. <laughs> I believe that we're experiencing nationally, and specifically in our state, what I would call institutional decay. That is when the institutions that the legislature has created have not been given specific directions on how to conduct and how to interact with, with communities. I believe that as a state legislature, my job is to fight for our, for, for our towns. I just I just had a meeting with a, with a small uh, family-owned harbor, and, and the gentleman told me, listen, I'm having a hard time. Uh, I, I, I'm getting all these fees slapped on me. We've done this right. We've treasured correctly for generations. Why, why am I all of a sudden paying all these fees? So I believe the legislation needs to be very specific in what the institutions that it's created are allowed to do. Thank you. Uh, and lastly, Thomas. Yes, uh, uh, as I mentioned, one of my biggest issues is coastline management. Long being on the shoreline preservation committee studying these storms, I'm also on the environmental committee, keeping making sure that our local beaches and our tidal marshes, our marinas, everything stays clean and that we, we see where we're going. But we're just at the beginning of this problem, so there, there needs to be a lot of time spent on it so we can make the right moves. I'm also on the, the Planning and Development Committee. This is the committee that looks at all of your planning and zoning statutes, so that when we go to rebuild our homes, or move our homes, or raise our homes, or whatever there is to do with preserving our shoreline, these, these issues are very serious to me, and I plan to go back and to work on this and this is one of our main topics of our area. Thank you. Thank you all. We'll move to the fifth question. Uh, before I ask this question, I want to mention this question focuses on spending and taxes specifically, and the candidates have dealt with that. After this, you'll be able to ask your questions. I would ask you to think about asking questions other than the standard question, which they get, I'm sure, all the time. They've answered it many times tonight about spending and taxes. But here's a here's fifth question from the uh, Council of Beaches. Compared to other states, Connecticut has the most combined public debt, underfunded pension, unfunded pension, and healthcare liabilities per capita. The near highest property taxes, plus higher than average business taxes, and a slower than average recovery from the recession. Spending increases by the legislature have offset any recoveries in revenue, even with the higher taxes. What, if anything, can and should the legislature do to address these issues? And we'll start with the 35th Assembly District Race and we'll come to see them. Thank you. Uh, we've been working on this. We've uh, increased the age of the state employees for retirement. I'm on a board, as I mentioned, the board committee, looking at ways of regionalization to cut our costs down. This is a big issue that I've been working on for years. I worked with Jim Crawford a couple of years ago to regionalize our dog shelter between Westbrook, Killingworth, and Clinton to bring our costs down. I worked on other projects so that we could bring the cost down for our taxpayers. State employees are contributing to their pensions. The new employees have more at stake. We had a few, uh, an administration years ago that gave the house away, giving free health care for life. These are the kind of things that we need to address. Combining our agencies to get more and get more efficiency to bring the cost down for our taxpayers. Thank you. 
President Obama. So, so I, I said it before, but it, it bears repeating. My desire is to make sure that our state does not become a two-class society of those with means and, and, and those who are working poor. And, and so I believe a primary component in, in, in seeing us retain a middle class is to work on the financial infrastructure of our state, to make sure that we are competitive financially uh, with our neighboring states. Uh, so there are a couple things I think we should we should be looking at. I think any new state employee that we hire, we should be looking at defined contribution plans. We, I don't believe we can afford uh, to continue paying for future generations what we're doing right now. Uh, I also think we need to look at reducing our corporate tax surcharge, which right now is at 20%. Uh, I don't believe in corporate welfare, but the reality is, is that companies can up and leave. Uh, I don't want to see that. Uh, I don't think anyone else looking to break into the, uh, the workforce wants to see that either. Thank you. Are you going to go through rebuttal? Uh, we'll start with Tom Messina. There's a lot of work to be done. Like you mentioned, this is a good time to be a politician. Our, our, our pension system that's underfunded for generations needs to be looked at and funded. We're one of the first administrations that's looking at that. Property taxes is my biggest issue. I mentioned the amount. There's lots of ways that we can move money around to save money for our taxpayers. When I got to Harvard, I studied every single tax system in the country, and every single system is different. Our, the way we collect our property tax is our main income for paying our bills. We need to keep studying that to bring the cost down. This is the first year, the first administration since 1990 that it started a tax force. There's a tax force that's now up at the Capitol looking at the way we tax our society. We just met just recently and this will be something for the first time in 25 years that we're looking at. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Bob. I'm not really quite sure what it means that it's a good time to be a politician. It's a hard time to live in Connecticut, and, and, uh, and I know what that feels like. A lot of my friends have taken off because it's such a hard place to live in. They're starting their families in North Carolina. Uh, they're having their, their children in, in, in Florida. Um, I, I'd like to be part of the solution here in the state. I think uh, one thing we should, we should take into account is when we think about debt, when we think about bonding, I don't think we can be bonding and taking out debt just to keep the lights on, to keep, our, keep up with our day-to-day -day costs. If we're going to go into debt, it needs to be after uh, a, a cost and benefit analysis and for capital improvement so we can see long-term uh, the financial benefits uh, of the debt that we take on. Because uh, I think a credit rating uh, slight in our state make us a very difficult place uh, for major companies to want to lay their boots. It's now open to the audience. Each candidate will have only one opportunity to respond, uh, and we'll just go down in order for that the next question. Uh, again, I'd like to ask if you have a question in particular that has not been covered tonight, we'd love to hear it start over there. Uh, we'll try to bring you a microphone. Uh, first of all, I have a couple of observations. Uh, beginning here, Mr. Pettis said he wasn't going to pan the country. Compliment him on doing, on doing that. Um, also here tonight, people mentioned uh, young people leaving the state. Now, I'm definitely not a young person. I'm 74. Things are pushing 75 very high. Uh, <laughs> but I suggest that part of the reason is not just cost of living, it's specifically at least in my part, because of the cost we don't have very much affordable housing. And that, yes. And my real question, however, is um, one of the main aspects of municipal budgets is education. It's education. That's about two thirds of the budgets of most towns in this state. What are they? What are these gentlemen and ladies going to do to stabilize the costs of education for people of Connecticut? Thank you, Mr. Obama. Our school systems here in Westbrook are one of the primary examples and the reasons why uh, my family came to this town. So my sister and I uh, received uh, attention from our teachers who were uh, very well trained. And, and I think one of the reasons why the costs are so high in, in the state is because uh, we have fantastic 
program to a nationally recognized and number five in, in the U.S. because we have so strong schools. My concern is less about the cost of education but more what, we're, what, what the, the teachers are, are able to do. I, my fear is that uh, the one-size-fits-all of, of the Common Core is going to restrict our teachers from doing what they know how to do, which is to tailor their lessons to their very diverse classes. Uh, my, my other concern is we're shutting down tech schools. We've, we're, we're, we're cutting costs on uh, tech schools from vocational education uh, takes into account and a belief that I have, which is not every student should be going to college, and we put the, a pressure on, on young people to go right into college, and maybe their their skill sets are are, are in, the, are in the, the vocation. So that is a is that my is that my deal? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm making my pet. So. <laughs> right. I think the game is shot. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Uh, first of all, we have the best public schools in the country here in Connecticut. For example, the head of Killingworth School, which is a regional school, I've been talking about that all night long, was just rated one of the top schools in the country. As far as I hear the uh, issue of special ed, which is a big problem, when you put together your budget on August 31st, and a family moves into town, and you have to go back and start making cuts. On my regionalization group, you're gonna see something this year we're working on, an issue where the state will pay for the cost of the special ed, but leave the administration on the town level. That way people aren't forced to shop for towns every year. Another uh, issue we can work on is bringing money back from the feds. Our next door neighbor in New York brings back about 10% federal money and we'll be bringing back 4%. There's a lot of issues and a lot of moving parts, but these are things that I've identified the things we need to work on to fund our great public education system. Thank you. Okay, we have time, I think, for just one more question. So, let's... Uh... My question is, our next door neighbor, New York, is running a full-on campaign about starting businesses, new businesses, where they <coughs> offer tax-free incentive for 10 years. No um, uh, sales tax, no income tax, and no corporate tax. And I wonder why anybody would open a business in Connecticut with that campaign going. I think, I think the question to be, what if anything do you think you can and should do about it? And we'll start at this end with Mr. Cino. Every, every state in the country has some kind of incentive to bring corporations to their state. Our incentive right now that's working very well is the Express Job Program, low interest loans to businesses to put people back to work. In the last four years, we've retained 62,000 jobs. These are business loans that are brought right down here to local businesses to put people back to work. So every state in the country has some kind of incentive to keep businesses or to bring businesses over the border. And people keep mentioning about all these businesses leaving. I don't see a lot of businesses leaving. Thank you. That saddens me. As I see it, I'm walking the district and I'm actually talking to the, the, the families who, uh, who have, have fallen hard times because Donald is closed down, because Bostich left, because Unilever took off. Uh, the list goes on. I mean, thank heavens that there are still great employers here, um, like, like Kenya, uh, a, a, a world renowned uh, um, uh, stovetop company. And, and we need to be doing more. I, I believe that if we're in the type of economy where legislators need to have intimate knowledge of the needs of, uh, of, of the employers here in the district. And I, I cannot wait to be an intermediary and, and to fight for incentives uh, to lure and encounter what Governor Perry is doing, coming up here and telling, hey, business, come on down, come down to Texas. Well, uh, if, if we don't take a, a radical change, then what we're going to see in the next is not just of our residents, but of our employers. We're now going to go to uh, to closing, closing statements. Uh, before we do that, I just wanted to, to note, obviously we aren't able to cover all the questions here tonight. One of the great things about local candidates is they are available, they'll be here afterwards, feel free to follow up with questions. Contact them after tonight. Uh, they, they will be available to answer questions, and I'm sure we'll enthusiastically answer any questions that we have. 
So we'll go to, to closings and uh, we'll start each candidate. We'll have uh, one minute to give a closing and we're going to do it in the same order as we did the opening. So we're going to start with the 35th Assembly District and first, uh, Jesse McLaughlin. I'm a young person. <laughs> and I'm proud of that. <laughs> I was taught by actually Jim Crawford back there to be the change you want to see in the world. And so I, I, I enter into the discussion and I ask for your consideration. I've knocked on thousands of doors this summer into the fall, asking people about the issues that matter most to them. And I hear the sadness and sometimes the anger uh, in their voices as they tell me how hard it is to live in this state. I'd like to work to create an environment here that is conducive not just to businesses, but also to people who want to lay their roots here and start a family. Tonight, I ask you for your consideration for the supreme honor of being your voice in Hartford. Thank you. Thank you. We heard a lot of blaming tonight, but I'm the elected official that can put the problems out. As I, my record shows, my last 12 years of public service from the Board of Selectmen to over 15 different boards and commissions. I'm going to use my experience to keep working on these problems, not blaming people. I'm retooling our workforce for our young people to put people back to work, bringing people out of poverty, to our transportation problems, to our flood insurance and coastal management problems, to the best public education system in the country. These are things that you need adults to work on to keep them running, to keep our state the best state in the country. Thank you. I'd like to, to first ask, let's have a round of applause for all of you. mostly cooperative audience. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Valley Shore Community Television for taping this and it will be shown in this community and actually probably in other communities as well. Uh, I'd like to thank the Westport Council of Beaches for its work and I can attest it was a lot of work to put together what has now become sort of an annual forum in Westbrook. Uh, and I also in closing just want to I want to thank uh, Mr. Uh, Lee Santos, who is our timekeeper. Uh, and <laughs> lastly, I just want to remind you on November 4th, you got to vote. Vote early if you can't make yeah, it on awesome. November 4th. And I want to make sure you're aware that in addition to voting for these and other candidates on November 4th, there is a referendum question on the ballot. Uh, the result of which would be elect to allow the legislature to establish the ability to vote uh, early, that is before election day, under various circumstances. It doesn't prescribe those circumstances, leaves it to the legislature, and it's very important that you vote uh, your conscience on that issue as well. So please do get out and vote, and again, uh, thank you very much for coming tonight.